traders from around the world, what's going on? It's me, Ricky Cadden from Real Life Trading Australia. I hope you guys have had an amazing week and I do hope you guys are ending the week in the green um, as there have been some amazing trades out there this week. Um, let's dive right in and have a look, shall we? Um, the SPY, now on Tuesday, I did speak about this big bearish candle here um, and I did say that most likely we could potentially retest and fade back, maybe go back low and go back down to the 100. Who knows? Um, however, this retest gap did not quite fill. As you can see, the the high of this candle was 294.06 and the low of this candle was 294.33. So, I mean, potentially we could go a little bit lower. Um, if we close below this, if we close below this candle, then we probably could look to see some lower lows, throw in another few traps below the 100. Um, but me personally, I don't think that it's going to happen. Um, I do expect us probably to just chop around here sideways, throw in a couple of long lower shadows to close the gap. Uh, but ultimately, I just think that we will bounce off the 100. Let's take a look at the five minute intraday. I was playing this on the E minis. Actually, let's have a look at the E minis on ES so we can really have a look at where I missed my entry here. So after this, after this big bearish sell off that we had here, um, I did notice that we started to get a lot more volume coming in at the bottom here. And it was right here that I was like, okay, if we turn around here, this is most likely going to cause a double bottom. I'm going to look for an entry at 29.65 right here. Um, <laughs> as you can see, got literally pennies away. Uh, literally, yeah, one tick, one tick from getting filled on my order and then uh, my stop was just below here. So um, would have been a very, very nice move if I did get filled. Uh, would have been nice to just get wicked in and then go to the moon like it did. However, you know, can't win them all. That's okay. There's always another day. So the E-minis, choppy, bit, bit sideways, most likely will continue to trade sideways for the next couple of days. Um, but yeah, look for some quick lower, quick little bearish moves, a couple of long lower shadows, and then just look to buy the dip. Let's take a look at MU. Now, MU is actually gapping down after hours, after their guidance on their earnings did sh fall short. Um, so on the daily, I mean, we are gapping down to here, 45.21. So right now, that is around about right there, which is the neckline of this double bottom. It's also this resistance level up here. Uh, so, I mean, guys, potentially, I mean, MU is not going to go to zero. It's not a company. It's a very strong company. Um, and most likely, if we do start to see a little bit more bearishness, you know, we probably could come back down to the 100. Um, but if we do come down to the 100, this is going to be a buy the dip opportunity. So if we do start to sell off, guys, it will be a very nice quick day trade. Um, but it's not something you want to be bearish on long term. Let's take a look at Square. Now, Square had a beautiful gap up this morning. And I mean, the last three days, we've really come up about 8%. Yeah, we did come up almost 8 about 8% at the highs. And a lot of these people here that bought here will probably look to take profits. We have got very nice volume supporting this particular trade. Um, but we also did get a very nice retest gap, green candle gapping up. So what I do expect here, guys, I'm just going to turn on the short term moving averages to see some resistance here. Okay, so what I do expect here, guys, is probably... If we do, if we do trade higher, probably have a quick little short sell-off, come up to about the 50-day EMA, which is here, um, and then maybe a little bit more of a rotation, and f you know fill this double bottom neckline, and then obviously look to buy the dip. Uh, the alternative, however, is if we do continue to gap, pretty much like we did back in this section right here. As you can see, we did just keep running 
straight past the 50 and we came back di back down to the 50 and that was a very nice dip buying opportunity. So if we do continue to run and we do break above the 50 and we come back down, the 50 will be a nice buy the dip location. And then I just do expect you know, Square to slowly, slowly grind higher. So Square looking good, a lot of real life traders, very happy about today. Uh, with Square gapping up, but long term does look good. Let's take a look at AMD, another semiconductor, and on the long term moving averages, uh, we are below the 100. Is looking fairly weak. I must say, AMD is looking fairly weak. We probably will. Uh, because we did have this nice consolidation level right here. We did throw, away, throw in a long lower wick, which, tra which trapped a lot of people. Um, however, I do expect us probably to trade back down to about the 200. Um, and this candle back here is going to obviously support, and all this down here is most likely going to support this trade um, to most likely bounce off the 200. So... I mean, AMD not looking super bullish at the moment, very, very sideways, um, but I do think that we probably could come down to about 27, maybe even $26, uh, and that would be a very nice buy the dip location. Let's take a look at BYND. Now, I did make one R on this trade today. If I just go back to the one minute, um, here's how I played it guys. So I did notice that we were getting a little bit of a downtrend here and then we popped up above this trend line. I'm like, okay, sweet. There's a lot of people, a lot of volume here, as you can see. Um, if we broke these lows, it's going to be a quick little sell off and that's exactly where I got in. So I did get in short here. I did get in short here on the retest. As soon as we closed below, did get in short with a stop above here. And I did take my profits. Actually, no, sorry. My, my stop was above this candle. Um, and I did take my profits down here for 1R. Um, so quick little trade, about 15 minutes, 10 minutes, um, 1R. And uh, yeah, that was pretty pretty quick little trade. It didn't really do too much the whole day. Kind of just chopped around sideways. It was a pretty gargantuous d gap. I mean, you know, take a look at the daily. We did gap up quite large and we did come straight to this previous level of resistance, which is the reason why I was looking at a short anyway. Um, but yeah, that was BYND. Probably going to chop around sideways and, you know, slowly come down, fill this gap eventually. Um, but definitely, definitely was a, a nice little trade. A lot of people trapped. Let's take a look at Apple. Apple's just consolidating. Cute little doji inside day. Um, I do still expect Apple probably to break down a little bit. Um, however, we could potentially just bounce, you know, go sideways and then bounce straight out of here. We are still above this resistance level at 215. As long as we stay above that, guys, I do expect us to go higher. However, if we close below here, I do expect us probably to come back down, maybe to the 100, um, and then it would be a very nice dip buying opportunity. Let's take a look at some weed stocks. Let's take a look at CGC. Now, CGC is at a very, very nice support level right now. However, what is interesting about CGC, guys, is this volume that came in just a few weeks ago from these candles. Uh, a lot of volume coming in, and I could probably take a wild guess that as the volume died off the next, the following week, all these people here that bought are selling right here. Okay. So as soon as the volume died off, guys, we did start to sell off. So a lot of people trying to pick the bottom on this one. Um, CGC, obviously there wasn't volume to support the, the continuation on this trend or the, at least the beginning of this trend. We are currently forming a nice double bottom. Take a look at the weekly chart. This is a very nice support level right there. Um, but we could probably come down to the 200 and then that would be a very nice dip buying opportunity as we did close below the 100 as well. So keep your eyes peeled on CGC, guys. If we do start to close below this level, um, it would be a very nice dip buying opportunity down here at the 200. Let's take a look at Cron now. Now Cron on the weekly, close below the 100. 
Uh, and on the daily, we did gap up today, but not a lot of volume actually. So not, not a whole lot of volume. We are coming down, back down to these resistance, uh, these short to uh, long-term resistance levels back here. Um, so I probably do expect us to come back down to about 784. Um, but from there guys, I mean, on the weekly chart, because we didn't bounce off the 100, yeah, I mean, this candle right here is the big bad boy right here that I'd be wanting to keep an eye on. This one here, and obviously this ginormous candle here, this nice little green volume candle right here. So keep your eyes on a dip buying opportunity. Not right now, guys, but definitely in the future. Keep it on your watch list, CRON. Let's take a look at another semiconductor, AMAT. Now, AMAT's probably going to gap down after hours as well, after... MU is gapping down as it's going to affect the whole sector. Um, it is at a fairly nice resistance level, previous previous resistance level back here and here. Um, obviously, if we do get a nice quick little sell-off, uh, a nice little play off the 100 wouldn't go astray and most likely look to buy the dip. So AMAT, if we do gap down tomorrow, it's probably going to be very short term, um, but long term, look to buy the dip off the 100. Let's take a look at Tesla. Now, Tesla, on Tuesday, I spoke about this big bearish candle and it was a very nice play. A lot of people making some money. And then we got a very nice bullish candle today and it was a very, very, very nice gap. Retest gap, which was a retest gap of the ages, really. If I just go back into the five minute, I missed this one. It wasn't actually on my watch list. However, this is exactly how you would have played it. I'll just turn the replay function on here. So realistically, guys, we did get the gap up. As you can see, we did close about here, right? So we did gap up. Here's the retest. Okay, if you missed this retest, there was a second retest and we do have volume coming, coming in here to support these trades. So you could have gone long here right you could have gone you could have gone long there however what the big the big signal to go long was this candle right here this gorgeous high wave candle a lot of volume coming in and you very well could have just taken your entry there with a stop below there and as you see that was pretty much the play to take of the day if you were looking at taking tesla so very, very nice play on Tesla. Um, some people did take it, but that's exactly how I would have played it if it was on my watch list. So if you did catch Tesla and you did catch that move, well done to you, fine traders. Let's take a look at the All Lords, the X, uh, XAO. Um, now, I did mention that most likely we would come back down to the 20. And if we did come back down to the 20, it would be a dip buying opportunity. The 10 or the 20, and here we are. Um, most likely we're just going to consolidate here for a little bit and then most likely go higher. Not a lot to see here, guys. Still in a bullish trend. Stay long on the markets. Here's Wastec Global, ticker symbol WTC and long-term moving averages. Beautiful trend on the short-term moving averages. On the long-term moving averages, we are getting a lower high. Okay, we are getting a lower high. We are currently at a previous level of resistance trying to bounce um, so if we do just chop around in here you know within this wedge bring the 100 then we'll most likely go higher however if we do start to you know break down out of this little consolidation period just look to buy the dip off the 100 very nice buy uh, very nice buying location we have never bounced off the 100 before ever um, so just you know, follow the trend, guys. The trend is your friend until the end. Just keep going. Let's take a look at my favorite shop, JB Hi-Fi, ticker symbol JBH. And this one really is just a steam train, really. I mean, we have gone up from the start of the year. We have risen 70%, which is an absolute huge, huge gain. Um, it is getting a little bit ridiculous uh, being a retail stock real retail company um you know uh, after we do have these massive run-ups just like this one here just like this one here you can see we do end up pulling back you know back here we pulled back you know 30 percent and then up here we pulled back you know about 
almost 30%. So are we going to pull back another 30%? Uh, I would say so, most likely. Um, when we do start to sell off, guys, you know, you don't have to try and pick the top exactly. As you can see, it was, it was a very slow burn. Like, you know, as we did start to break down, we did come back up to retest those highs and then we went lower just like we did back here. You know, double top, triple top, and then back lower. Um, so if you are looking to short, don't try and pick the top. Just look for the patterns and trade what you see. Don't have a bias on the market. Let's take a look at Harvey Norman. And Harvey Norman is just continuing to grind higher. Is a very nice selling location as we are at a very nice resistance level um, and previous support level. So from here, guys, just look to buy the dip off the 100. Very nice buying location. And uh, yeah, we have come up a fair way from the start of the year or from the end of the year. We've come up about 50%. So most likely we will soon start to consolidate sideways and maybe, you know, come back down to the 200 and then look to bounce. That's Harvey Norman. Let's take a look at Telstra. Now I did say the other day we were coming back down to the 200 on the daily and we gapped down today to the 200 and look at that, we're bouncing. Um, we are currently bouncing off the 200. Are we going to continue higher from here? Probably not. We're probably gonna chop around sideways, create a nice little double bottom and just look to buy the dip on Telstra. So this is a very, very glorious pullback. We have pulled back, you know, a nice, you know, just over 10%, almost 15%, which is, you know, fairly decent for Telstra as we did have a fairly decent rise uh, from the start of the year. So Telstra pulling back. Um, another one, just want to keep an eye on the patterns, guys. Don't try and pick the bottoms and just look to buy the dip. Let's take a look at Westpac, uh, Westpac Banking Corp. And I did mention that this is most likely going to go higher. Uh, and right now we are at a resistance level. So if you are in, this wouldn't be a very bad time to go long. I mean, sorry, go, this wouldn't be a very bad time to uh, lock in some gains. We have risen about 10%. So if you did buy back down here off the 100, you know, you could probably look to buy the dip again off the 100. So we are getting a little bit of selling volume coming in. So yeah, most likely look to take a little bit of profits off the table, guys, and lock in some gainage. Let's take a look at crude oil. Now crude oil is looking pretty juicy. We are getting some very, very, very nice long lower shadows here. I did miss the dip buying opportunity of this long lower wick uh, just yesterday. Spewing, but that's okay. I, you know, I did catch some of it, but not all of it. It would have been really, really nice. Uh, we are most likely going to continue a little bit lower and um, this will most likely be a very, very nice dip buying opportunity. So keep your eyes on oil, guys. Uh, we are probably going to start turning around and going higher soon. Take a look at gold and um, if you can remember back on Tuesday, I did say this to me looks like it's a fake out and probably going to be a inverted head. Uh, sorry, uh, it'll probably turn into a head and shoulders pattern. Um, here is your head and shoulders pattern. Um, I do still expect us to go down to the 618. I know I have been saying that for a while, um, but it would be a very nice dip buying opportunity if we could get down there. Uh, well, who knows? I am very neutral on gold at the moment. Um, but just keep your eyes on a long-term dip buy opportunity in the future if we do start to come back down to the 100. Very, very nice. Let's take a look at the Aussie dollar, last but not least. And right now, we have hit support once again. Back here again, guys. Probably going to do exactly what we did throughout August. It is going to be a very, very choppy sideways so if you are looking to buy just play the channel on the hourly it's probably the best way that you can play these channels um and just yeah you know play the channels look to buy low sell high just like back in here and uh look to buy the dips looks looks fairly good um yeah so follow follow your volume guys and look to buy the dips and and play this channel 
not a whole lot to see here, guys. I still do think the Aussie dollar is going to go lower, um, but it's just not going to fall off a cliff just yet. All right, guys, that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I'll be back next week on Tuesday with another real life stock review. If you want me to review any stocks, leave it in the comment section below. And if you haven't done already, go to the description, click on the link and get involved in our Facebook community and join the group so you never miss one of these videos. And until next week, guys, love life, live life and trade it. I'll see you all soon. Have a great weekend. Bye.